everybody. This is Hammer Striker here, and we're going to talk to you today about the Glock 42. It was released almost exactly a year ago at SHOT Show, and it's Glock's current offering in the super compact pocket pistol. It's a striker fired 380. It's about 5.94 inches long, 4.13 inches tall, and it's extremely thin. It's 0.94 inches thick. It also only weighs 13.6 pounds or ounces uh, unloaded. So it's a very small pistol. It can be carried inside the waistband, outside the waistband, but its real claim to fame is pockets and purses. This is the small gun you carry when you need something very small. The magazine capacity comes with two magazines. They're six plus one. Show you that this gun is clear. The, the biggest thing about this Glock is that it's like every other Glock. It has the same trigger, the same operating mechanism, the same sights, and the same grip angle. So if you're used to one of the larger Glocks, you'll be able to adapt to this very quickly. It's a little bit bigger than some of the other offerings in the pocket carry realm, but not by much. And some of the things that Glock has been able to do with this is it has extremely manageable recoil very easy to keep on target. It's pretty much the perfect little pocket pistol. This one here was released, this one and the other one on the table over here were the first few right after SHOT Show. This one I ordered the Monday after SHOT Show. It came in at the end of the week and then two weeks later I ordered the other one and replaced a Bodyguard 380. You may have read some various issues with feed issues and you know, different you know, functional issues. These guns did suffer from that. I'm not going to go into the details of that. That We see our other video on the Glock 42 feed issues fixed. But Glock has made it right and any that you would get new today would have all of the upgrades. Once they're updated, <clears throat> they're flawless. They work like any other Glock. They'll eat anything. They will tolerate some amount of limp wristing, weak ammo, strong ammo. And, and, and work just like any other Glock. The sights are your typical Glock sights, which is the U-bar dot. This particular one has the Glock factory sights on it. Typical with Glocks, the aftermarket came up very quickly. So here's another unloaded one. And this one has TFO sights. These are a tritium backed day-night sight. They're fiber optic during the day and tritium at night. Very easy to see. <clears throat> they also offer, Crimson Trace offers a laser guard, which goes around the trigger guard. This is a Glock 26, but the laser guard goes around the trigger guard. They now offer it for this gun as well. So all of the typical carry options are available. There are numerous holsters out there's inside the waistband, outside the waistband, but being that this is really targeted as a pocket gun, there are a couple of DeSantis pocket holsters. This is the pocket holster that DeSantis actually makes for the gun. It's uh, MK is the part number on it, and it does fit. It fits well. The key to any holster system is that access to the trigger is restricted. Any holster you've got, you want to make sure that access to the trigger is restricted. You don't want to be fumbling around in your pocket trying to pull the gun, and in the process of doing so, you pull the trigger. So this one does cover the trigger, and it comes up and makes the shape of the gun effectively a square. However, this holster is actually bulkier than needed. The original holster from my bodyguard that I got rid of will also fit it with a much lower profile. Now a little bit of the trigger housing is exposed, but you'll see that I can't get to the trigger itself. So it is secure in that the trigger is not accessible. I can't get a grip on the trigger to pull it. So this is a safe holster for it, and it's a much smaller footprint. This fits in your pocket a lot better and still gives the gun you know, the square shape you're looking for, so it looks like a cell phone or something in your pocket, protects the trigger with a little less bulk. Typical, like all the other later generation Glocks, the magazine has a little bit of spring tension on it. So when you hit the magazine release, the magazine will, on its own, want to leave the gun. 
These are single stack magazines. They hold six. And by comparison, show you some size comparison to what previously was the smallest Glock made. Now keep in mind this one does have the Crimson Trace laser guard, so there's a little bulk added to this just because of that device. But if you compare these two side by side, you'll see that the Glock 42 is roughly, you know, half inch shorter. When you compare them grip to grip, which actually we'll put it this way, you'll see the grips are almost the same. Let me put the magazines in there. The grips are almost identical. But where you see the big win is thickness and weight. The Glock 42, being a single stack, is significantly thinner than the Glock 26. This one is 6 plus 1, 10 plus 1, so you are giving up 4 rounds to get that thinness. But when you're carrying a gun like this, it's because you need something thin and small, and that's the trade-off that you're going to give. As far as the trigger, the early production ones, the trigger was billed as being a 5.5 pound standard Glock trigger. However, it, it was actually a little bit heavier than that. It was This one was coming in, one of these was coming in around 7.5 pounds, and one was coming in almost close to 8 pounds. After they were sent out to be updated with all of the various parts, the triggers are now just a hair over 5.5 pounds. Polishing them up, they're right about 5.5 pounds. Other than that, they've got pretty much the standard Glock trigger, so let me show you the again the demonstrate that it's unloaded. You know, as I pull the trigger, it's got the standard split trigger as part of the Glock safety system. It has all of the standard internal Glock safeties that any other Glock has. As you pull the trigger, very crisp break, it's a very little take up, and it has the short reset characteristic of Glocks. There's the reset, very audible and tactile. You can, you can feel it in your finger and you can hear it quite well. This would be all the way back out. So we'll do that again. There's a little take up. Short crisp break. Relatively short reset. And short crisp break. Typical of Glock, this trigger pull is the same every single time, whether it's the first time it's been fired or whether it's been, you know, been cycled. Takedown is the same as any other Glock. You confirm it's empty, point it in safe direction, pull the trigger, grab a hold of the side and pull it back just a little bit to release the tension, pull down on the takedown levers, and slide it apart. Internally, you'll recognize the exact same, just a smaller version of the uh, Glock trigger mechanism. You have the trigger group back here, you have the firing pin block release mechanism here, slide stop, locking block, and the standard rails. So internally this is just like any other lock. It has the single pin for the trigger and a single pin for the trigger group. This does not have interchangeable back straps like some of the other Glocks, but it does have the RTF you know, rough texture finish that they call it, but it's not, it, it sounds, they, you know, it's called rough, but it's really not. They're very easy to get a hold of, very easy to get a grip on. It does have it on the front as well, but they're not aggressive in that they're going to hurt or abrade your hands. It's a very comfortable gun to hold and very easy to, to hold on to. On the slide, dual recoil spring. The spring itself, of course, is steel, and the inner cage that holds the inner spring is steel. The guide rod itself is polymer. Three point two inch barrel with polygonal rifling. And this is if you compare this to another Glock barrel, it's identical, just smaller. It's the same setup, the same locking mechanism, the same feed mechanism. It has the standard Glock drop, drop, uh, firing pin block right here, and this is the firing pin hook that the trigger mechanism operates. So if you're familiar with another Glock, you, you're familiar with this almost instantly. Putting it back together is just as simple as any other Glock. Slide the barrel back in place. Make sure it seats. Slide the guide rod in. 
and there's a little well at the front of the barrel that it sits into. You want to make sure it's in there and centered. Kind of clips into, you can almost hear it click into place when it's ready. Line the slide up with the guide. Pull it back and it's ready to go. One unique characteristic of this particular Glock is that it's actually made in the United States. It's made in uh, their new facility in Georgia. I think you'll see more Glocks being made in that facility, but this is one of the first, and that was what enabled Glock to bring a 380 to market. The current 380 they had, which is the Glock 24, which is effectively just a 380 version of this, they weren't able to bring in because it didn't score enough points on the import scale. By making this in the United States, the import scale is taken out of the equation, so they can actually make a very small, very light uh, 380. I know rumor has it they're going to be coming out eventually with a 9mm single stack, but this is the offering they have available today. Overall, this is one of the guns that I carry on a regular basis. When I need something a little bit smaller than my Glock 26, this is what goes in my pocket. Travel with it quite often, and I'm extremely happy with it. Thank you. If you like our video, please share, give us a thumbs up, and stay tuned for a little range footage at the end of this video. Thank you.